So we're here with Craig. You might know him as the Sack Collector. Well, my story started collecting Swiss Army knives uh, way back in 1984 when I was nearly five years old. Before you know it, you end up with about 80. How's it going guys? Welcome to Knife Banner and today we are going to be looking at Victorinox knives or Swiss Army knives, whatever you like to call them. We've got the sack collector from Instagram, Craig. He's going to be coming in and uh, as a special guest. We've got a bunch of free stickers on the website if you buy a Victorinox right now and we're going to be looking at exactly what that thing is. Let's go. All right guys, so we're here with Craig from, uh, the, you might know him as the Sack Collector on Instagram. And Craig, what uh, what exactly do you do? What, what, what's your story? What's your whole thing? Hey, hi Zach, uh, hey everyone. Uh, well, my story started uh, collecting uh, Victorian Ox Swiss Army knives uh, way back in uh, about 1984 when I was nearly five years old. Uh, my granddad bought my first one, which was a Tinker. You know, as you grow through life, uh, you, you seem to gather one bits and pieces up. Before you know it, you end up with about 80. <laughs> and then you open your drawer and you realize you've got a problem. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you've and, got a problem uh, where you got a whole bunch of solutions. Maybe that's really what it is. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You've always got something handy in your drawer, that's it. That's and in awesome. your pocket. So uh, with a Victorian Oaks, that's what you do have, really, for the small little knife where it is. So, yeah, and it just become a fascination, really, because you get all the different scales, the colors, the tools, the variants, and it just becomes, you just start collecting them and then your collection keeps growing. And then I found the awesome community on Instagram. So then it even grew even further. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they, that's, that's your Instagram handle is at Sack Collector, right? That's the your yeah. official, yeah. So if you, guys, if you guys haven't checked them out, make sure to check them out. Seriously, some of the most awesome images that you're gonna see on Instagram, especially dealing with Swiss Army Knives or Victorinox. But uh, let's jump into a couple of these uh, and, and Craig's gonna kind of walk us through and help me with a little bit of my own uh, ignorance when it comes to some of the uh, Victorinox models here. So uh, first up, we have the Victorinox Classic. Now guys, we're gonna be going through these kind of amount of tools per knife. So we're starting with least amount of tools, working our way up to most amount of tools for the knives we're featuring here. Um, and so first up, we've got the Classic, uh, which goes for about $15.99 on the website, and it's got five tools in it. And uh, I mean, uh, Craig, what, what's your opinion of, of kind of this size, this style of, you started with a Tinker, right? You, you own them a yeah. lot. And uh, so what's, what's oh. kind of your opinion of Classic? Well, Classics have been going since about 1935, if I believe so. So it's one of the oldest ones around, you know, for the size of it. And the uh, classic SD, obviously, the SD stands for screwdriver end, which is the tip on the file. Oh, it's okay. meant to be, uh, that, that's what the SD stands for, a screwdriver. I, I totally didn't know that. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, originally it was like the toothpick and the nail, uh, the toothpick and the, tooth, uh, the tweezers weren't added until a later date. Oh, about, okay. I think about 1942 they got added to it. So yeah, that's got so, the, the, yeah, the, and that's why it's called classic SD because of the SD screwdriver tip, huh. which is a bit of history there for you. Yeah, no, that's great. That's super great. Now, when you talk about 1935, the uh, so Victorinox was started by what is it, Carl Eisner, I think was his name, and uh, if I remember right, it's like his mother's name was Victoria, and he used the French word for stainless, which was Enox, and that's how you got Victorinox. Have you heard that same story? Is that sound about um, right? Yeah, I think I've heard a couple of different ones, but yeah, that sounds about what to, I believe so yeah. as well. So, yeah. <laughs> you know how it is with, with the history of the things, you know, you never know for sure, right? Hey, hey history's good. That's what Victoria is now. They've been around for a long time. So. Yep, exactly. Um, and now, guys, when we're talking about the classic, kind of an exciting announcement that we have. These just went live on the website. We have this uh, Blade HQ exclusive that we've done. Um, this one goes for about nineteen ninety five uh, because it is a limited edition variant that we're doing. And uh, it's got this awesome wolf howling knives into the night. And you know, I mean, you can't go wrong. It's a, a great design from our graphic designer, uh, Sean, and uh, we're really stoked on it. So make sure to check out the website and try to get your hands on one of those. We do have limited numbers, you guys know how that goes, so, so jump over and, and see if you can get yourself one. All right, so next up we have the, oh, gotta move, move my paper. We've got the Cadet. Now this is the, you know, in, in, the, in the classic Victorinox Red, 
Um, but this is an ALOX version. I know that they do, and we have another ALOX on the table. Is this a, a special edition variant? I know some of them are based on year. Is this one just always in the metal? Do you know the kind of the difference between the, the ones? Well, I believe that one you're holding is the Berry Red from 2018. Okay. So they are a, kind of year dependent on how they do them. Yeah, they've released uh, limited editions from 2015 onwards, and it was Steel Blue 215, I believe, and then it was Violet 216, OD Green 217, 218 is the Berry Red, and then this year was a Gold Champagne. Yeah, the Gold so, Champagne, which we'll show we'll off here a, in a second. An Alux Cadet, a Pioneer, and a Classic. And they do all three of them each year in those colors. It's been so, yeah, for the last cool. four years, five years, so yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm kind of the, the I'm the type of guy that I you know I, I had Swiss Army knives as a kid. Um, I actually had like one of the little Swiss Army cards, which we're gonna look at here in a second. And, oh, right, yeah, uh, yeah. But I never I never really dove into like the the history and the culture of it. So it's great to have you on to to kind of walk us through the finer points. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, now you know a question I got for you, and we're gonna get into the tools a little bit uh, as we get into some of these more like tool specific knives, but. You know, one thing that I see with a lot of Victorinox is, um, and with that SD is the same, it comes, they all come with, or a lot of them come with a flathead screwdriver tip. Is this a more common screwdriver head in Europe? Because in the United States, pretty much everything is Phillips. And so I'm wondering why we see standard more often on it, the Swiss Army. I'm with you completely. It's okay. <laughs> so it's not, it's not just a, it's yeah. not just a <laughs> cultural thing or a, right. a, a geographic thing. It's just, they put, for some reason, they're putting flatheads on everything. Yeah, I'd say most of the time we reach for a Phillips, and I think yeah. that's the most common screwdriver in the UK too. Okay. In my opinion. That's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Opinion. you're probably right because yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of better all the way around. Now, one thing that is nice about uh, a lot of the flatheads that, that I've seen Victorinox put on these different knives is that you know you, you can use it as a pry tip too, which is great. Oh yeah, for sure. So so, anyways, it's, uh, strong. it's solid. Yeah, it's solid. So so this one here was a limited edition for 2018. We have a few of them left, but the Cadet model in general we have on the website, this particular one goes for $31.99. So great little tool. You get seven tools um, in this nice slim package, which is pretty awesome. And you know, I've been carrying I've been carrying a compact around with me because um, I haven't carried a Swiss Army knife since I was a kid. And I've kind of fallen in love with it a little bit. <laughs> and so I really like how thin this one is because it goes in the pocket really well. It's just a tool, uh, it's one of, if not, it's the lightest, best oh, yeah. sack to carry. Just being two, la two layers with the tools on it, it's perfect. It's a yeah. great, great I mean, sack. Even comparing it to that classic that we looked at, I mean, it's, right. you know what I mean? Like it's almost as thin as that classic, but a lot more knife. Oh um, yeah, a lot. Now, now, speaking of knife though, I think that one one thing that a lot of people have a complaint about is blade steel on, on the Swiss Army knife, because it's it's kind of like a proprietary in-house stainless that they do. Am I am I right on that? Yeah, you are completely yeah. correct on yeah. that. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Agreed. So how often are you having to, if you're carrying one daily, how often do you feel like you're having to resharpen the blade on your Swiss Army uh, knife? Depends on usage, doesn't it, Zach, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, on a, if I'm carrying like a tinker, which I carry most days if it's a sack, I resharpen generally once a week just to give it a top up, you know, just to make sure I'm getting that perfect cutting edge yeah. every time I use it. If I pull it out and I've got a cut string, bit of rope, opening in a box, you know, I want it to be as sharp as possible so it's an easy work and uh, I just make sure I sharpen mine regular. It's yeah. I'm force of habit, I guess, being a chef as well, it's kind of, you know, I'm always sharpening knives so it's just a case of just pulling it out and getting it on the diamond steel. Yeah, that, that's actually what I was going to say because you're a master chef uh, in in real life, right? <laughs> right. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I imagine that sharpening the knife's no big deal. You just just throw it on, and get it done, right? Yeah, I just use a diamond, normal chef's diamond steel, yeah. and just sharpen, and I get a perfect edge every time. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the trade-off. Is I found so, like I said, I've been carrying this compact. We're gonna get to this in just a second, um, but uh, I've been carrying this compact, and honestly, I've loved it. But I've I personally feel like I want to carry two knives because the, now this one has a little bit of a thicker blade stock to it, but the blade stock is yeah. just so thin on so many of these, right? Yeah, completely, really um, is. Yeah, so so anyways, so this one here is the Alox for 2019, like you said, it's in the Champagne, and this is the Pioneer variant. And okay. let's see if I can, you know, I'm not even gonna try because I'm gonna cut myself, so. <laughs> 
I'm just gonna show up. So tell me, this kind of steps us into some of the interesting tools that you'll find on a Victorinox that you don't really find in a lot of other places. So what's this tool here for? Well, a bit of history on the Pioneer to begin with. It's based on the 1961 Soldier. Uh, far as I'm aware of, Victorinox supplied uh, the Swiss Army with a soldier's knife. And the difference between the Pioneer and the Soldier is it didn't have a keychain, the loop. Okay, that's missed. the only difference. Yeah, far, yeah, because it was carried. It was like based on the Soldier 1961 for civilians. That's what. So that is basically okay. the civilian version of the military knife of the soldier. Now, and that that was yeah. that was the thing that uh, Swiss Army knife was kind of coined by. American GIs in World War II, right? Because they would go and they were seeing all these officer knives and soldier knives these guys were carrying and they came back and they're like, oh, it's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, and yeah. that uh, tool you pulled out there is the reamer punch. Yeah, the reamer punch. Yeah. Now, and some of these come with an actual awl as well where you can actually use it to sew. I think the climber has one like that yeah. as well. Yeah, some yeah. some variants, but the pioneers generally come just with a straight awl punch reamer yeah. type tool. So variants. Now this is this is another place with with Swiss Army that I, the, the the Victorinox Swiss Army knives that I've had to wrap my mind around is I feel like if, for, this is a great example of talking about variants, right? There's the Soldier, which has a different right. name, but the only difference between the Soldier and the Pioneer is that it has the keychain lanyard, right? Or the to my chain. knowledge, to my knowledge, right? Yeah. They made that keychain so they could attach it. I don't know. It just they right. said it's for civilians, and that's the variant difference. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I've seen this. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this in other places. Like you have the super tinker and the climber, and the only difference between the super tinker and the climber is the screwdriver or the corkscrew. Correct. Yeah. So I think it's interesting that these very minor differences can make like a whole another knife uh, line, right? One one little tool to put a new name on it, and yeah. it's branded completely different. Yeah. It's how they've always been. I'm afraid. Huh. It's interesting. I have nothing to be afraid of, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh, it, I guess it's just a way to release another a line, another sale for another Victorian yeah. so Some tools do come in handy when they add them, though. It's true. You know? It's very true. Um, so, anyways, guys, uh, this Pioneer in the the Alox, the aluminum pattern with the champagne. This one's going for fifty one ninety nine on the website right now, and has seven tools included in it. Now, uh, I noticed with these Alox ones, they don't have the toothpick or the, any of the outside tools. They don't do the outside tools with these aluminum scales, and I'm assuming. No, the, okay. on the original soldier knife, it was just it was just the knife okay. tools what they needed day to day to get by in the military. And every Swiss soldier got handed one when they joined. Cool, that's really cool. Which is really cool. I wish yeah. the military did something like that these days. To be honest with you, it'd be. That would you know. be awesome. That would be. I know yeah. a lot of guys, or uh, certain branches, at least in the United States, are issued uh, certain particular knives and things at certain times. So. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it varies, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, it varies. Um, so next up, we have the executive. Uh, this goes for thirty-eight ninety-nine. It has eight tools in it, and the executive yep. is a great tool to bring up another question that I have for you about Victorinox. Uh, let's yeah. see if I can find it here. Yep, there it is. All right, tell me about this tool. <laughs> well, the executive is famous for that exact tool you've pulled out right there. It's the unique orange peeler cum screwdriver tool. Yeah. Which is bizarre. Like, uh, why would you need an orange peeler on a Swiss Army knife? I find <laughs> I'm I, You know, here's the thing. I kind of love it. And the reason that I kind of love it is I feel like this tool and this knife personifies a lot of what Victorinox is about. And that's yeah. like this like one tool purpose type thing where it's 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 a very specific tool for a very specific yeah. job right um yeah but another neat thing is that the community has found all these other uses for it right so i, I was doing a little research because when i saw this i was like what is this thing like this makes no sense but um <laughs> on top of being an actual orange peeler that's what it's for um you it's got this serrated edge which can be great for a serrated and i've seen guys even use this as a wire stripper which is kind of cool well, that tool itself, that sack, is made famous from the TV show MacGyver. Hey, I want that knife back, you know. That That is the main Swiss Army knife in the 1985 MacGyver series, which went till 1992. That was, that's where the orange peeler became famous and the executive. It's that's the one awesome. he most used in the actual TV series. I did, actually but, did not know that. Know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Watch um, a bit of YouTube on it, and you'll uh, see him pull the old actor pull that out quite a lot. 
Oh yeah, well yeah, and I, so I, when I was researching to do this, I uh, I ran across a lot of MacGyver videos, and I forgot one how awesome that show is. If you guys haven't been watching MacGyver recently, check it out. It's so much fun. <laughs> and two, um, it's it was fun just to see like the different uses that he came up with, right? All the different little tools. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, the uh, original MacGyver series is a uh, classic, and that was yeah. just the classic sack for them in the eighties. Yeah, absolutely classic. Um. All right, so next up, so this was actually, this is actually the the Swiss Army, I guess, knife uh, that I carried the most as a kid. And uh, I was probably like, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 in that, in that range. And this is the Swiss card. And it has nine tools. It goes for about $29.99 on the website. And uh, yeah, I carried this thing in my, I had a leather black wallet with blue flames and a skull and a, and a chain, because you know, that's that's what the cool kids were wearing. <laughs> 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 this thing lasted me like two years. This this little Swiss card, and uh, I don't know, it was it was great. Like it had all these like it just had all these little things that at the end of the day it made me feel like MacGyver, right? To have like scissors and to have you know the little pins and the pen and the you know they call it a letter letter opener because obviously that's not much of a knife, but uh, no. you know I found a lot of use for it as a kid. That's a kid, perfect little kid's knife, to oh, be yeah. honest with you. Not, yeah, honestly. Not very, they can't do much damage with that. Yeah, I can't do much. Exactly. And I always carried, I always had like a, 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 some sort of slip joint or tradition in my pocket as well. But uh, yeah, this thing rode on my wallet for a long time. Eventually, I did I did end up breaking it. But I mean, <laughs> you know, two years of riding BMX bikes and skating skateboards and it didn't break is pretty impressive. <laughs> That's good. It's good. So what about you as a SAC guide? Is it, does anybody in the SAC community ever pay attention to these at all? Because I know there's a lot of modding and stuff that goes on. But I'm assuming one. these are just like, yeah, you kind of buy them and it is what it is. I have that exact one in uh, in one of my wallets I have. Yeah, I carry awesome. one around with me too. Not all the time because I change my wallets so up, it varies. But yeah, 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 it's a great, great little, uh, well, it, it just disappears in your pocket, in your wallet. You don't even feel it. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, nobody knows you've got it neither. So if somebody says, well, have you, anybody got any scissors? boom, the Swiss card comes out, you have a little pair of scissors. And it, it comes in really handy, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, outside of all of the little things that I manufactured as a kid to use it so I could be MacGyver, um, I, it actually was pretty useful more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, uh, well, and I already said that, that one's going for about 30 bucks on the website, guys. So make sure to check it out. All right. So this one, this one here is the, the Swiss Army Compact. And I, I have fallen in love with this knife. So in getting ready for this video, like I said, I haven't carried a Swiss Army knife forever. And so I, uh, I, I grabbed one off the shelf, I threw it in my pocket. I've probably had this in my pocket for the last like three weeks. And uh, you know, my, my buddies and everything, they're all making fun of me because I'm pulling it out all the time and playing with it. And so the compact has 11 tools um, and it has two tools in particular that I wanna talk about because again, kind of personifying this thing where I feel like Victorinox puts tools on knives that aren't necessarily useful, but people find use for. <laughs> so number one, the corkscrew. So you're, you're a master chef. Have you ever used the corkscrew on your Victorinox to open a bottle of wine? I have indeed. I used you it have, quite okay. A, <laughs> quite a lot this Christmas, to be honest, just gone. That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> My um, wife will tell you exactly that. <laughs> I'm, so I'm not a big I'm not a big wine drinker, but uh, I've never once used uh, <laughs> on, any, on any knife, a corkscrew on any knife. Um, but something cool that I, that Victorinox has been doing is they're putting the that little screwdriver, the micro screwdriver. Yep. Um, and so the way that it goes, guys, is it just goes, let's see if I can get it sideways here. It just screws right in, locks right in, and just stays there. Like I said, this thing's been in my pocket for the last couple of weeks, no problems at all. Um, you know, they need, to, they need to add them uh, little screwdrivers to every single corkscrew sack as standard stock yeah. to me. They that's really, what I feel. Like they really should. It's so useful. Yeah. So I wear glasses, so that's what drew me to it originally. Um, yeah. I haven't used it on my glasses at all, but I was doing some work with a Dremel the other night, and I couldn't find the little uh, my little Dremel wrench to change out the disc. And I pulled this okay. out of my pocket, and sure enough, this perfectly fit the disc to change out the, gen the, or the, the Dremel bit to change out the disc. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah, I was pretty excited about it. I was pretty excited. <laughs> um, but the other reason that I chose the compact is, again, I've never found a use for the corkscrew. I guess, obviously, opening bottles of wine sounds like you're getting good use out of it. Um, <laughs> but another cool thing is that uh, you can use this to untie knots as well. Have you seen this before? All right. I haven't. No, I can't say I've uh, seen yeah. that before. So I was, again, I was just kind of Googling around, like, okay, what are all these tools? Um, 
and, and like what, what are what different ways the community are using them. And so what you can do is, is you actually take the end, right? And then you screw this yeah. into one of the openings and then you just pull. And ah. so I've intentionally like tied a bunch of knot with different, you know, paracords and strings. Every single time, like crazy tight knots, every single time I've used this and gotten the knot out. So it's got it's kind of a neat little neat little hack that you might not think about with your. Yeah, with your I'll have to give that a look yourself. Yeah, you should you should try it out. It's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, the compact also is the finished ninety one millimeter sack out there. Yeah. Well. So and that's the other reason that I chose it is because, you know, there's there's other knives that have you know a couple more tools or have a couple more features, but I liked how thin it was personally because I knew it would be an in pocket knife and I'd probably be carrying a second knife with it, and so yeah, I I really like the compact for that reason. Um, now the other thing, Craig, I need you to tell me about this hook okay. here. What's the story on this? Yeah. <laughs> Far as I'm aware, the history on that, it used to be carried for parcels or right. was put for like the military or something along that lines to carry heavy loads with yeah. them to move things around. Yeah, you could so put basically you, a parcel carrier. Yeah, if you had twine, uh, something that was twined or whatever, or you know, yeah. uh, you you could hook it and then you had a handle to carry it around, right? Yeah. That's yeah, that's correct. Yeah, completely. So, what would you use this for today? Uh, uh, <laughs> See, this is this is where I landed to, man. <laughs> maybe hanging it on a clothesline and taking a photo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's a good. So, so it's an Instagram prop. That's what this is now. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's an Instagram prop. Or, yeah. Uh, what else could you could use it to? Can you you could prop it up to stand up? Uh, Maybe uh, tightening, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah. So this tightening is tightening knots, no? Yeah. So this is this is kind of where I ran into it as well. There, there's out of all the tools on the on the Swiss Army knives that I've been looking at, out of all the ones that I'm like, eh, maybe that's real, maybe that's not. Maybe I could use it, maybe I couldn't. I've found the community has all these really neat hacks on how to use the tools differently. Oh, yeah, for sure. But the, but the parcel hook is the one where I always find these videos, and it's guys trying really hard to have a good reason to have the parcel hook, but I, I haven't been able to find one. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, I, I haven't yet, to be honest. Yeah. So in, in, the, uh, in, in the, the, uh, the spirit of the SAC community, I'm actually, I've got some uh, OD green mi uh, micarta that I'm going to make scales for this. Right. And then I'm Tell actually going to, yeah, <laughs> I'm actually going to cut this side out and I'm going to put a, a Phillips head screwdriver uh, bit oh. into that. And Perfect. I think, yeah, I think with a Phillips head screwdriver, I honestly think that this compact is pretty much a perfect pocket tool all the way around. That that would make it just spot on, yeah. I believe. Yeah, because it already has so much, so much amazing stuff. It's got the scissors, it's got a blade, um, bottle opener, pry bar, screw, you know, flathead screwdriver. And then you put that Phillips on, pff, sold. So and anyways. The, and the, so the only use that I've really found for that parcel clip is uh, in a in a movie called Moonrise Kingdom. They use it to like open a tent with it. It's zipped from the inside. And that's the only thing I found that would look seemed like kind of legit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll set up a tent and get you. Yeah, set, set up a tent and start using it. <laughs> um, but speaking of guys who are finding different ways to hack and stuff, um, you guys here on YouTube, you guys should check out. Uh, I'm gonna get the name wrong. Nikos Doulis Nickgyver. Have you heard of this guy before, Craig? I haven't, no, no. So he's on YouTube, he's, he's, he's got all these videos and basically just features on all the different ways you can use the different tools. And uh, so while I was getting ready for this video, I, uh, I stumbled across his stuff. So you guys should check him out on YouTube. Um, I, if you Googled like Nick Guyver, it probably would come up. But anyways, kind of an interesting deal. And that compact goes for $43.99. What a uh, bargain. Yeah, it's great. Uh, the, uh, I, sorry guys, I'm talking about this knife a lot, but I, I really like I really have fallen in love with it. Um, the other cool thing about it is it's got the ballpoint pen in it, which I think is just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get replacements, so I don't know, just just cool knife all the way around. Yeah, all the replacements on these sacks as well, such as that little screwdriver, the pens, they're only like a couple of dollars, a couple yeah. of pound. Yeah. They're not expensive, peanuts really. Yeah, I was looking, uh, I've been using this toothpick a lot actually as well because I got bad teeth. So, it, you know, I've been using it a lot. I won't show you the end, it's all tore up. But, uh, so I was like, oh, how much does these cost? It's like a buck fifty for a new toothpick. So yeah, they cost nothing to replace the little consumables on the yep. knife. All right, so next up we've got, uh, we're getting kind of a, the fatter style knife. Um, and this is the Huntsman. Um, this is specifically the Sapphire where you can see through the scales there. And um, this one's got, 13 tools on it. Um, now, 
for me, Craig, this is getting into the realm where it's getting a little too thick where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'd want to carry them in my pocket every day. Um, yeah. What about you? Do you do you tend to carry a knife that thick around? I think that's my max limit, to be honest. I think okay. the Huntsman, yeah, it's it's in the yeah, it's in the deluxe tinker realm for thickness and uh, the super tinker. Yeah, I wouldn't go any bigger than that myself because it it does start to feel heavy and you can feel it in your pocket because you don't get pocket clips on sacks unless they're custom or modded. Yeah, you know, so you, you have you have to slide it in your pocket and you can feel it there. You know, so I think that's as big as I'd go. Yeah, and it feels for carry. yeah for everyday carry exactly. Um, it has a lot of great features. Like I said, in thirteen tools in it, um, there's a lot there to do whatever you want, and you know it's got that that handy dandy parcel hook, which we found to be so essential. <laughs> For opening tents. <laughs> For opening tents. But uh, no, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it is a little bit thicker than I would want to carry, but it is packed with tools. So, I mean, I guess that's the trade-off there. But it's because you've got the, such as the saw on there, haven't you? You've got yep. the big knife, you've got the reamer, you've got the sewing, or you've got the corkscrew, you've got the wood saw on there, you know? Yeah. It's got scissors. It's got the main three features, hasn't it? The scissors, the wood saw, and the knife. And generally, they're the three big tools on the Victorian Ox sacks altogether. If you've got them three, then you know you're looking at a four layer sack. Oh, okay. So those three kind of identify if it'll be a thicker sack or a thinner sack. Yeah. Huh. You, to get all three together, you're in the realms of it being over 90 grams in weight, to be honest. So I think that, hunter comes, that huntsman comes in round about nearly just under 100 grams in weight. So, right. Yeah. Huh. Quite cool. heavy for a little pocket knife. Yeah, it is. But, you know, you throw in your backpack or something like that when you're out in the woods, you probably got oh, everything you per, need, right? For a backpack. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and that goes for thirty five ninety nine. So you're getting 13 tools for 36 bucks. It's a pretty sweet Massive deal. Bag. Yeah, and that's the other thing with with Swiss Army knives is is these you know you're getting a lot of stuff for not a lot of money and you know I know a lot of you guys out here on YouTube you know you want your M390s you want your S30s you want your Super Steels and I completely agree 100% I completely agree I think that if 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 Victorinox was to put a premium blade steel on these these would be near perfect knives um, but for what you're getting for the for the for the cost I think everybody should have one of these in their pocket they're just awesome. I think that's how you've got to sum it up, Zach, haven't you? You've got to, you're paying a low amount for yep. what you pay for. You know, if you're paying 190 bucks, you're going to get M3 steel. Yep. If you're paying $20 for a classic SD, you're going to get standard steel. Yep, exactly. You know, that's the way it's going to be. You know, and it would be nice if Victoria Knox would release a decent steel limited <sighs> edition. Now that even, would, be, would go down sweet. Even just D2, even just a D2 blade, yeah, I would, yeah, oh, sure. I'd be over the moon. I'd be over the moon on D2. Um, you know, and that's the other thing, guys, is, is you know, I carry this compact, and I've, I've used this more than anything else. For, for a whole week and a half, this is the only knife I carried. And, you know, it's still got a bit of an edge on it, surprisingly. I did put a chip or two in it. That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it, it's, it's not a horrible stainless steel. It's, it's a patented thing that Victorinox has. It's their own brand, yeah. or their own version of steel. And it's not horrible, uh, but, like I said, you know, it's not an M390. It's not, it's not a super steel for sure. All right, so next up we've got the Climber, and we're actually gonna look at the Climber and the Super Tinker together. Um, because like I said, they're basically the same knife, they're just one difference between the two. So the Climber comes with 14 tools, the Super Tinker comes with 14 tools, um, and the only difference between the two is the Climber has the corkscrew, and the Super Tinker has the, the coveted uh, Phillips screwdriver head there. Yeah, the, uh, the actual Climber, is the Spartan, but with scissors. Oh, okay. So this is so this is like the Spartan model. The climber is it's like exactly the Spartan the model, same, just scissors. But it has the scissors in it. Oh, okay. Correct. Oh yeah, here we go. Yep. You and know, it's originally called. It was previously named the Backpacker. Oh, okay. And they changed it to the climber. They changed it to the climber. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. So, anyways, so uh, you know, and honestly, you know, again, when we're comparing thicknesses, right? I, this was almost, I almost grabbed the climber and put the climber in my pocket, um, but that compact ended up winning my heart. But yeah, so just a little bit thinner, and I think this actually works really great uh, for an in-pocket carry, no problem. Like, just put it in your pocket, it's, this is right at that limit, I think. The good thing with the uh, climber, you get the little, mic, the smaller blade as well, like the Spartan. So oh, okay. you get the big blade, and you get the, you get the like, one-inch blade, I think it is, or... It should be uh, yep. at the other end. Yeah, there you go. Yep. 
uh, your pass will open or your yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the nice thing when you do get go with, with the thicker Swiss Army knives is you are getting two blades. So kind of going back to that yeah. same idea with the traditional that you you know you have at least two blades and so you can you know dull one out, keep one sharp, and then yeah. you're not having to sharpen as often, right? Hundred percent. Um, so the climber and the super tinker both go for thirty one ninety nine. All right, so last up guys, we have the fattest one on the table, but also with the most tools coming in at 28 tools. This is the Swiss Champ, and it comes in right around 105 bucks. And uh, so this gets into the realm with Swiss Army knives that I kind of like lose the vision a little bit. So Craig, tell me, why would you buy something like this over, let's say like a Leatherman or, some, or a Gerber or something? Maybe you wouldn't, but, but what's the reasoning behind something this fat? This fat? I just think it's like uh, a Swiss Champ is classed as Victorian or standard, isn't it? From yeah. about 1985, the release of Swiss Champ. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's it's not really a pocket knife. It's too way too heavy to be walking around all day with oh, it. Oh yeah. If it's a backpack knife, you throw it in your toolbox kind of knife. Uh, it's got plenty of tools. It's got everything on you can ask for. You know, I've been all them tools. Uh, like, oh yeah. I think that, that one's got 29 being wood scales. Yeah, the wood scales, and this is and, uh, this is actually something else kind of cool, guys. That Victorinox does is the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, they have a couple uh, special variants for like the Navy, the Army, Wounded Warrior. So kind of a cool thing that Victorinox does. But yeah, no, I mean, kind of a neat thing. You know, you get like a full blown pair of pliers. You know, you got that magnifying glass that I popped out. It's it's a cool design. It's kind of a cool thing. But for me personally, I just uh, I don't just don't think this one's for me. <laughs> Yeah, with the uh, standard Celador scales, the plastic scales, you get the, obviously the pen, the yeah. toothpick, and the tweezers. So you get 30, around about 32, 33 tools, I think, in total. Yeah, with that, with with the uh, with the uh, plastic scale version. Yeah, because they, they count the little screwdriver, what you showed earlier on, as a tool as well, obviously, on the, that oh, yeah. comes standard the Swiss Champ. Oh, okay. It should do. Yeah, Does well, it it should, yeah, and like you said, it should come on all of them. <laughs> yeah, completely. All right, so uh, one tool that really caught my eye in this is the fish scaler. Now, Craig, have you done much fishing at all? I haven't. My father-in-law fishes a lot, but yeah, I've yeah. done a swim a few times. I can't say I'm a shark fisherman. You yeah, know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I yeah, I fish. I, I occasionally will go fishing myself. In all the years I've been fishing, personally, I don't. I've never used a fish scaler ever. Personally, um, I'm sure they come in handy. I've just never used them. I just use my knife. Um, so for me, this was another tool that I looked at and I was like, eh, why is that on there? Like, I don't know if it's really useful. Um, now, Craig, I don't know if you know this, but like I said, I kind of like deep dove in all these nerdy ways to use these different tools. And yeah. kind of a cool thing you can do with the fish scaler is you can actually use it as a range finder. You can use any item as a range finder, but um, knowing the exact distance between the teeth here, if you wanted to, you could use this as a range finder if you're out hiking and you need to know the distance on things. I thought that was kind of another cool thing the community's doing Figuring out different uses well, for tools, right? Being a chef, obviously, I'd use a fish scaler to de scrape the scales off to cook. So if I was on okay. a boat, just say I'm, I'm in the sea, yeah. and I've not caught a massive fish, just say a, a little bass, yeah. a sea bass, and we wanted to have a, a cook it, fry it on the boat, I'd actually obviously scrape the scales down the fish just to clean it off. Right. That's what that's for, really. So, but yeah, exactly. how often am I going to be on a boat fishing for sea yeah. bass? <laughs> with, a, with a Swiss Army knife in that's, the UK. That's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so that's interesting. So as a chef, though, you do use you do use a, a fish scaler quite often, then. I'd, yeah, but it's oh. obviously an industrial size fish scaler. Yeah, really, of course. You want to scrub them and clean them because you you're using big fish like bream and salmon. You, okay. You're descaling a lot of big fish. A little Swiss Army knife wouldn't do that. Work. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, that's, you know, culinary masterwork is definitely outside of my, my wheelhouse. Yeah, it's, it's just a little gimmick <laughs> tool on a Swiss Champ. They've just added everything on there. Yeah, they really have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, Craig, thanks so much for coming on and walking us through some of this. It's been great uh, learning some things that I personally didn't know. I don't know about you guys here on YouTube, but I personally didn't know about these. And um, let us know down in the comments, guys, uh, what your favorite Swiss Army knife is and why. Uh, I feel like everybody's got a story with these. It's like a traditional, you know, everybody's got a story with them. And then Craig, remind us one more time, where can everybody find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. That's the only social network I'm on. It's uh, at the underline sack, underline collector. Uh, yeah, otherwise, you know, I represent in the sack army, which is always a good thing. 
we're all in there, massive community. You know, we're growing strong. Cool, right on. But yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for the shout. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.